Welcome to the Porn Stars of People podcast. I'm here with Charlie Hart. Hi there. How Hi. are you? Uh, right. Let's. Uh, so you said you were listening to the podcast probably to prepare on the way over here. Yeah. But can can I say for me that you are a fan? Sure. Of the podcast? Yes. Yes. Actually, I. You know what? I like it because I like what you ask the girls what they get to talk about, and then also that the. You get to know the girls on a different level. And yeah. You're like, oh, hey, what are you doing as a real person? Like, I'm starting to get haters. Do I actually like you, you know, because of what you do on film? Or do I like you because of your Because you're a human. Yeah. And then what? Yeah. Where's the Because it's like, oh, shit, she's real now. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I'm take, I always tell guys all the time, I'm like, look, I know I'm a little fantasy on your screen, but I'm a real fucking yeah. person. And but, I'm like, you better be okay with this. But I think... That I think that can enrich, the like the 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 fantasy right is is now that they know all the oh, weird little quirky sure. things. Oh yeah. There's, Although, or maybe you can take it away. Love and they get off on that. They're like, I know everything about you, mm-hmm. and like, I have guys that sit in my, you know, when I'm camming, and they sit in my room, and a guy will ask a question, and they'll answer it before I do. Yeah, camming is very personal. I had oh, a, I had yeah. a friend who was camming. I'm long dating before. these men. Yeah. They're it's my boyfriends. It's very personal. Oh, yeah. There's like a lot going on. Because like uh, I had a friend who would cam and then half the time she would do better monetarily mm-hmm. when she would just sit clothed and talk to just just yeah. chat. Yeah. In an open chat with yeah. these people. And because if you think about it, there's look, an intimacy. There's another level. But it's you're also going to make money from when you're clothed from the guys who have been there the longest right. who have you've built a relationship with right. like I said I'm dating these guys yeah. because they may have come in when I'm legs open going fucking crazy <laughs> and they come with me and then afterwards they're like oh, clear-headed and then I sit there and I <laughs> talk to them like a real person and they're like wait right. a minute I'm clear-headed and you're still cool and I don't want to leave right yeah, away yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. maybe you are kind of cool so then when I'm clothed they're like I will still tip you when you have clothes that's on a, too and that's what I'm relying that's, that's such a we weird it what what's happened in the last couple of years? We've changed the entire spectrum because, like, do you understand how impersonal it was for me? I'm 34. Mm-hmm. How impersonal it was for me? We uh, <laughs> the first time I viewed porn, we we had it in like a shoebox buried in a field. And it was a magazine, and it was like four dudes, and we would go dig it up and look. Oh, really? I was, I was very fortunate that, <laughs> thankfully, my dad hid a VHS behind mine okay. and my sister's. Um, school pictures. Oh, of course. There that's was a little eight. I know. I'm like, it. Dad, really? Like you? Th- we were required to dust every Saturday. Oh, shit. It was like the household chore. What did he chore. write on the like, tape? Um, or was it? A, it was, it a was some, tape. It was something that my uncle gave my dad. So it was like a, it was a purchase that had like a had like a cover on it. Mm-mm. It was recorded. Yeah. Off, it was just, oh, just like it was a just dirty soft, It was just a soft core. Yeah. Um, HBO special. Yes. I remember everything about it because me and my sister would watch it over and no over shit. again. Oh my god! Yeah. Sister? Um, my sister is three years older than okay, me. Okay. Wow. So we would just like, and I would re- record it. Like I still remember all of those sex scenes. I'm yeah. like, I feel like all of those points were like so pointy in my life. I There's remember like all like sexual to old porn. Oh, I yeah. found my old. My parents moved out of their house in uh, in November. I found my old porn stash. Uh huh. And and like I, I was like I'm just gonna throw this out. The, no, there's but something like, you can't. I, I know. I needed it. I, I know. I used to work at adult stores. Yeah. So I have Deep Throat and sure. Debbie Does Dallas Fuck. and the, um, the Devil and Miss Jones. Yeah, the classic. Did you like, see I this show sure. on Showtime? Was uh, David Tell very very talented. I comedian. love him. I, w- I met him. I uh, uh, went to one of his shows. No shit. Once. He did. Yeah. Um, uh, he did. Dave does old porn. On Showtime, really? they gave him like a season, and they, he would just watch that's, old vintage porn with with his guests. That's amazing. It was really fun. I am that person. Like since I work since I worked at adult stores, though, like I collected these. Like I haven't seen some of them. Yeah. Like I you just have I ones have that them. You haven't watched? Oh, for sure. Yes. No shit. I have I have tons of porn that I haven't watched because yeah. I was like because I would get it for free or I'd get it discount yeah. or if it had like one girl in it and stuff. Like I need to like. Get the perks of, of the job. I, I would know. I, I, I have so many. My s- first job, I would get thirty percent off sneakers. You would get free porn. I would get free porn, and I would <laughs> get forty percent off um, dildos. You know, and yeah, everything in right. the store. So, like, when oh, wait, people- is there a nostalgia to to a sex toy? Oh my god! Yes, my ex-wife. She was like. <laughs> 
She was like, you Did have you to fight throw over up. the. She was like, you have to throw some of these out. You've had them forever. I'm like, it's my first dildo. I have to. She made <laughs> me throw great. out oh, just like a whole like bag of it. And I mean, you I a still bag had, of dildos? Yeah, a ba- and it was so sad. I'm like, I haven't. I'm like, I don't use these. She's like, that's why we're throwing them out. I'm like, but I haven't used them what? yet. <laughs> that's you know, an so I'm just that person. Like, I have a hoarding problem yeah. with sex toys. That's hilarious. Like, I just like to be that person to like have everything because I do. I've got like cuffs. I've got hog ties. Yep. I've got. You know, when Hurricane Irma was coming through and I was legitimately worried about stuff, I was worried about most most of my like money is in my sex toys. Okay. I, I have over seven thousand dollars worth of sex toys. Really? And I'm like, so those are your prize. Possessions. Those are my prize possessions. Like, oh, they're going to blow. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, my God, they're all at the end of my bed. And if they get flood. wet, they're all rechargeable <laughs> and they're all high end. I'm like, OK, my stainless steel ones and my glass ones are fine. I'm like my silicone. But I was this like packing for Irma. Like, yeah. oh, my God, should I leave this one? Like <laughs> I was prioritizing my dildos That's and hilarious. I was worried about the porn under my bed and like yeah. that getting wet and stuff. I'm like, those are classics. Like there is a lot of money like. I would uh, you buy porn and it's like fifty dollars yeah. for like a new one and yeah. I'm like that ain't Dude, so no joke. So that's that's a question. Does this stuff hold? Does this stuff hold the value? Like, can you inv- can you with invest the in porn with the classics? Like a, Look, like I know you that you wait every- for it to come back around. Like, you get some seventies porn and you're like, listen, in five years, this thing's gonna be no worth. girls now. Look, the business is so saturated now that you have to understand that you're gonna be in the ninety nine cent bin at some <laughs> point. You know, and that's why some girls will never never do porn because they're like, I don't want to be at that point and stuff. But it's like, you know, if you get the classics, I mean, Caligula yeah. and, you know, Deep Throat yeah. and, you know, all of those that like made, you know, a point and did something yeah. and stuff. I mean, I don't know if I don't know is porn nowadays going to do something like that. Well. It's, well, you bring up a couple points. So I was talking to Ariana Marie, and she was saying that she had saturated the market with her own work. Mm-hmm. So she basically is like taking two years of kind of time off just to mm-hmm. let the old material kind of like sure. fluctuate, and then like cr- it's like take that, enjoy demand. it, yeah. appreciate it. It's called supply and demand. Yeah. My guys always ask me all the time. I'll be on cam, and they're like, "Charlie, why can't we find an interracial?" boy girl scene with you I'm yeah. like there's a reason you can't I'm like there's a reason I've only done blowjobs with yeah. IR Build because it. I want you to want it I'm like <laughs> why the fuck would I give you I'm like I'm already giving you anything yeah. everything right. anyway right. okay so for you to ask for more is even insulting right you know what <laughs> you like you give a you take an inch you want a mile you yeah. know like give an inch take a mile or something yeah so, one of those one of those expressions that yeah. I always fuck up yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I do it because I want you guys to actually want it, you know? And it's like, I'd rather it be my name on it too and yeah. stuff. And then, you know, other, other names and stuff, because it's, it's not about, we're not about stars anymore. Yeah. It's not about porn stars and stuff. So I'm like, so if I'm going to make my name, I want to make my name. Sure. You know, I don't necessarily want to m- make it for Every, you know, right, right. Everybody. You're not taking. Yeah, you can't just take all the requests. Yeah. All right. So you were going to ask me about my sign, which yes. I don't. You were very excited, and I was like, yeah. I don't understand these people. So okay, so start. Let's start with. Look, what Like, do you think this is a like this is real? Like this really lays out yes. the way the the signs yes. are. But I also believe in a lot of different things. I went to school because I was a sociology major. Yeah. So okay. sociology. So a lot. Ah, sociologically speaking. I think that has a lot to do with you. I think even where like where you're raised, your ethnicity, yeah. your family, your birth order. Yeah. Are you older, younger? What are you? Are you the youngest? In my family? Yeah. So there's four of us and the fa- this is and this is actually in interesting middle. because of the way the the structure of the family was. So I was originally mm-hmm. so it was one, two right away, eighteen months. I mean my sister eighteen months apart. And then we had my sister, she's four years younger than me and that was supposed to be it Mm -hmm. so the way the 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 family raised us it was interesting because it's like they have two kids they don't know what the fuck they're doing Uh then they figure it out a little bit they wait four years and then me and my sister basically helping out raising my my other Mm -hmm. my other sister and then uh a bunch of years after that was it five years later we have my little brother oh really possibly by accident yeah. Uh, so my brother's nine years younger than me and so we were again a totally different family again when we Mm -hmm. had him 
So I was number two and I was in constant competition with my older sister. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm and I'm an Aquarius. An so Aquarius. what does that so what does that say about me? Well, I was gonna say look, let me be let me be honest and preface this with when anyone first thinks about, you know, astrology and horoscope you think of like cosmo and the shit they tell you in the back of it it's like okay don't go outside today and you're like whatever you can fucking tell anyone yeah that, you know well, i find that it's so vague yeah that yeah you're that, like it's so vague of that course like, it re- applies to me right i can read anyone. all of them and then relate to and, everything in all of them and that's the thing though when you really delve down to it and when you really get into like your sun sign, which is an Aquarius, you yeah. have your moon sign, and you have your rising. There's actually three. Now I'm now it's all it's all There's over my head. There's your sun sign, where the sun was when you were born. Interesting. There's where the moon was, and then you also go on the location of where you were born. Because I was born in Indiana, you were not born in Indiana. No. You were born in a totally I different. Bo- I was born place. in Schenectady. You were born in Schenectady, New York. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My <laughs> uncle, my uncle used to live there. No shit. Um, so you were born in Schenectady. Yeah. At 8 p.m. At 8 p.m. Yeah. On this date. On so Ash Wednesday. On Ash Wednesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I mean, if you think about, okay, people can believe in God and it's like, why do you believe that God is, you know, made you the person that you are? Why wouldn't you? It, but if you don't believe in God, you maybe believe in energy and you believe in, yeah. you know, natural, you know, like. It is because it's scientifically right. yeah, accurate, okay? Why wouldn't you also believe that the moon and the gravitational has pull of the earth has it? something to do with your personality? It's interesting because I just I just saw the did you see the, were you anywhere for the eclipse? I don't know if it got in Florida. I you know what? I wasn't anywhere special. No. I took a trip specifically to Nashville so I could see the eclipse. <sighs> I planned shows around it, the whole thing. because uh, nice. I have that luxury in mm-hmm. my life. Um while it was happening, I totally get how past civilizations when that was happening were freaking out Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the sun is being covered by the moon i mean it's it's insane because because when you can't you know scientifically and you can't like mathematically and have someone tell you look this is the reason that this is happening and you grasp onto it and you believe it you know it's more it's easier for people to be like you know Jesus made you like this and this is your personality and that's why you're like this. And people will be like, okay, yeah. there are more to believe that than they are like, look, like science and everything. Um, and, you know, I believe, you know, I believe in sociology. I also believe in birth order. Um, okay, yeah. So all I of these things. A lot. Yeah. So, I mean, all of these things influence when you read my, when you read are. my, when you read all my signs, what is that? So what should I, what kind of person should I be? Oh gosh. You know what you need <laughs> to do? Look, I tell every person this. I'm like, if you really want to blow your mind, I'm like astrologycafe.com. Okay. Astrologycafe.com. <laughs> yes. You put in, you know, your birth, you know, your birth date, the yep. time you were born and the location you're born. And then it'll tell you. You know what your moon is, your rising. And so what are all what are all yours? Mine, okay. I'm a Gemini. I'm a. My moon is in Scorpio, and um, I come across as a Taurus. What is okay? What does that mean? So coming across as a Taurus means that I come off very like discerning, and it's like really hard to sway me. Okay. And then, but I you guess, are a Gemini, so what? But I am a Gemini, so I'm the sign of communication. I never shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, I like to be bright. Yeah. <laughs> um, but wait, you like to be bright? Right. Oh, you like to be right. Okay. Yeah. Gemini's, oh, wait, wait, wait. Gemini's like to control people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a little, um, we're two sided. We're the twins. Okay, sure. You know, I even tell people that I'm like, I am too. Like, so life is a big chess like, game? Oh, you, yeah, you did it yourself. Like, yeah. Even just like tattoo wise <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, I, people interest me and like getting to understand people interest me. So almost to like, to understand them is to like, manipulate them but not that like i get off on manipulation because i don't because yeah. i like i like to make people happy and yeah I'm, I'm a service sub so it's like right. i want to understand someone so i can understand if i like them to see if i want to serve them right so, interesting kind of weird interesting yeah um so we didn't so we didn't we we didn't uncover any of the things that i should be <laughs> 
uh, because of because of being an Aquarius born in Schenectady at 8 p.m. on Ash Well, Wednesday. because I don't know your birth chart. It's really good. It's, <laughs> it would be hard you for me look, to look that up. I know up. what mine – because that's what no, I was saying. People I'm memorize like, it. So, like, I'll be honest – okay, so this, most of my interactions with people that I don't know, as it turns out, well, they're either going to be with audience after the show, but then they've watched me for a while. They have some idea. Mm -hmm. Or it's a date. And this is – and people on dates always want to do things. So they're like, oh, you're an Aquarius. So you're – and they start telling you about who you are mm -hmm. rather and how than asking And how you often who, when they're telling – you wrong are you, you say wrong the well it's time. not even that because because they're looking for like on a date people are looking for like either the up or the down for sure and so it's, we're so checking off lists in so our head right Is so they're taking the exaggerated uh you know end of the spectrum so like oh so that's why and they start doing this causality thing we, we want to because we always want to figure people are out like we we want boxes in our heads and we yeah. want to understand things. That's why we, you know, that's why we, well, ra rules. but rather than listen and be vulnerable and, and, you know, and see the, see no, the good in people, everybody's looking for like, what oh, kind why of girls are you dating? Work. Because they sound like me where they're like Gemini's where they're like trying to figure you out and they want to be right. And like, yeah, it might be, you know, what, what do you usually go for? Have you found that um, you go for a certain kind of signs or anything? No, no, because I never, I, you know what, I never really pay attention to that part of it. So that's so that's why I. Uh, you would be surprised the kind of people that you surround yourself with, though. I mean, to find, look, to look up someone's birth chart will just like kind of blow your mind. Because granted, you're going to look and you'll be like, wow, it seems kind of general, but like, wow, that's. It is like yeah. Really once you start owning it, but that's, I guess it's like what you said. If you believe in it, you can you can you can fit the things. But then that's what makes everything kind of vague and interesting. Is that is that True. all of those ideologies? You can find your truth in anything. Yeah, you know, you can it's believe that there's a spaghetti god in the sky. You yeah, know, and believe everything that they well, I don't, say. I don't. I think that was the plot <laughs> of uh, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. But I don't. I don't, I don't know that anybody's believing I did in the see that. Oh, I can't watch that show without wanting. <laughs> is it a show now? No, well, I'm, it was a movie. I saw it, it as was a movie. Well, I saw it as a movie too. Yeah. I I think they probably tried to turn it into a. I'm just like stuck on spaghetti now. <laughs> like, ugh, I've been doing. I've been doing this vegan thing, and it's okay. been doing really well. Yeah. What so does that far. mean? So what what does it mean to be doing well? Okay, wait a minute. Hold when on. you switch your diet, how do you know wh I'm whether or not you're doing okay? I feel like every meal is a success. <laughs> okay. That's how I know I'm doing well. <laughs> if it's just every meal. Yeah. I mean, I'm just kind of like I feel like I've taken life, What do you mean it's a success? That. Because you are vegan now if you've avoided the 12 things that you were eating before that weren't vegan now, that's the success, is that what you're saying? Yeah, as long <laughs> as I'm being <laughs> As long as you're staying on as diet. As long as I'm staying as long as I'm staying away from the things I should be staying yeah. and I'm consciously looking at what is going into my body. Yeah. And It's weird now. Everything now is about what to avoid not what to actually eat so no. people are like oh like you tell them what you're doing and I, they're like oh i couldn't do that because i love cheese i know and it, i tell people i'm like you we have just been told it's meat starch veggie our whole life yeah you know and that's what we've grown up on when really you look at the food pyramid yeah that's not what it says right you look at commercials now and it's like buy Doritos, buy all these processed foods. You know what they don't have to make commercials for? Fresh vegetables, fruit. And fruit. <laughs> yeah. Like they're trying. They do. They're, Some, remember they're when starting, they had to? They're starting to. Remember now. when they, they had to? to they had to do it for uh, for milk in the in the eighties and nineties. But milk, we shouldn't be drinking milk no, that's anyway. True. Did you see this video? Okay, there's a guy. I don't know if he's from Cornell or not, but there's a guy who calls it uh, baby calf. Growth fluid, and that's and, uh, what it is. And and you watch him talk about it, and I get I got like obsessed with this guy. But watch, I watched the video. When you like, call it by its a real couple name. times. It's for a couple times a week. Uh, it, he he explains how it's baby calf growth fluid. He said he said this this white liquid is its job is to take a baby cow and turn it into a baby calf and turn it into a big cow as rapidly as possible. Yep. Um, and so it, it's amazing to watch. But you so know that you think dairy about is it delicious. And, and and you think about it, and you're like. So why the hell are we giving baby calf growth, growth fluid to human beings? <laughs> right. And why are we giving these cows? We're giving them hormones to yep. feed us. How do you think those hormones in their bodies are one affecting them, two affecting us? Yeah, we're we're, As, we're all done. Ask us why women like 
young girls are getting their periods and getting breasts earlier. You're right. Why people are getting taller. Like cancer, all of the I mean the the, the neck, I mean you just said a bunch of great things. Yeah. Girls getting their breasts earlier is what we Yeah, all are. <laughs> I mean that's not a bad thing. No, but <laughs> no, look, but, but no, it is a bad thing no, because now women are getting them earlier and telling we're telling girls to cover up in schools and that they have to because they're inciting the boys when really we needed to be telling the boys but stop looking at the girls. Don't rape girls. But that's been forever. That's been no, forever. That's what we that's need. been forever. Yeah. You know, I was actually thinking about that. Like, I listen to so many different kinds of music. Like, I listen to country. I listen to 50s. Like, I listen to cunt. I uh, listen to Christian. Like, and I was listening to 50s music, and I'm just like, the way that they talked about girls and the way that they kind of said something about them, but didn't you know yeah. we don't have that resistance anymore we just smack a girl on the ass walking down the street and say i like that you know like what happened to that yeah. subtlety well you know and it's like it's because it was public subtlety and private like oh, yeah. it was horrible like the, it, it it's not that long ago in this country where you could legally beat your wife you could legally kill your wife and there was mm -hmm. basically no that's yeah. your wife that's it was yeah. that was your property, your property like yeah. a, like chattel like a cat like it like Look, everything and and then, and then let's just get into marriage and the whole. Let's get into all of that. Wait, that. so wait, let's go I back mean, to vegan. We're, we're, so we're going anyway. in a circle. So, so let's start back with vegan. So, what, so why are you? Why did you go vegan? Why do you think this is the way to go? And what do you like about it? You know what the reason and has your I body did it? Settled I, with it I feel like it's all a process. I've kind of just naturally gone this way. So here's the other thing. You're you're thir you still mean you're in your thirties? Can we can we can we say that? Course, I don't know. People yeah, are. I don't uh, care about me. So what happens is your body changes a lot over oh yeah time. so I, I there's things that i used to eat that i used to enjoy now if i eat them i have a reaction so sure so yeah the the journey is always about trying to figure out the where balance. your body's at today i i tell guys that all the time i tell i tell young men that i sleep with because i found out this past week i went and saw this guy who i hadn't seen in three years mm -hmm. and he had great sex three years ago yeah. and i'm like okay we're gonna have great sex this time and I came out for his birthday and I realized that he was turning 23. And I'm like, wait a minute. When I met him, I was th turning 30. And I was like, look, I'm not having sex with a guy who's under 21. Like, yeah. you need to at least be able to sit at the fucking bar with me and order right. a drink. Right. You know, you're still a child. Like, when you turn 21, your body starts to change. You start to think differently. You start to act differently. You know, there are just these stages in your life. And... He um, and I come to find out he's turning twenty three, so which means he was nineteen. Oh, so you didn't know? Sex. You didn't know this? I didn't know this. <laughs> yes, until like this last weekend. I'm like, oh well, my god! Because well, you probably said out loud, you have to be twenty one. I, I told him. He was, like, yes. he was like, yeah, I'm twenty one. Of course, yeah, I'm he's 21. like, he was like, yeah, my birthday, <laughs> my birthday is like on the sixth of October, yeah. which it totally is. He didn't yeah. lie about that, yeah. but he would just lied about him instead of him oh, turning if twenty. We're, if him we're turning twenty one, if we're at the finish line, and, and, and yes, and, of and, course and, he's going. And we're not allowed to cross it. We just go whatever, whatever thing I have have to say now yes i will say yeah of course i love cats and you're sneezing you know you don't the last yeah. the last I mean, thing yeah once you've done all the all the work all the leg work look and this kid and that's live, why that's why guys get this get this rap about lying too yeah i mean look the situation was perfect for me and this guy like i was with my ex-wife at the time we had an open relationship he lived next door it was perfect yeah I could just this call is like a stereotype and, like, come yeah, over this is great. like it was great yeah but he now, was you know lying I, you know now you know now everybody's gonna find out where you live and try to move next door that's <laughs> all that's <laughs> happening this right was, this was, no like, this was three door? years ago <laughs> this was three years ago and i was like okay this guy was great at sex then which means he was 19 and good at it so yeah. it was just and it's really funny so what happened so so, but also three years ago, along with the vegan thing, along with that, I was 90 pounds heavier. Yeah. So it's like I had made a whole change in my yeah. diet. I did gluten free to start off with and then lost 40 pounds. And then I started just from just from eliminating gluten, doing gluten and just getting rid of, you know, getting rid of all of that, upping my water, getting rid of yeah. soda. And then oh, yeah. I mean, um, soda will drop 40 pounds oh, for sure. Um, and then I, you know, was like, oh, you could do the carbonated water or whatever. I'm like, I started that and I was like, well, fuck that. I don't even like that. I'd rather just yeah, drink water. Yeah, drink water. You know? so get a I taste for that. water. Yeah. And then I dropped 40 pounds and then doing, um, yoga at home. And I was fortunate enough that I stayed at home yeah. and I could turn on the music. I'm 
I'm weirdly domestic and I love to clean and yeah. organize. There's something fun about it. I know. And it's I'll weird. Okay, so how does that? How does that? We'll go back I, to this. I turn I turn on the music, get in my bra and panties, and then I clean. And I would find myself just working out and like twerking and yeah. squatting and doing walking lunges throughout the house. Yeah. And being able to focus on my diet more and just kind of figure out my diet and then losing more weight and then i'm like okay i'm gonna go into the gym and i started working out and actually lifting weights and like then it came off like super fast yeah and started toning the moral is be a hermit people yeah be, be a, a hermit, hermit and you'll get, you'll focus get on all your goals yeah i i think about that now i'm like i do i eat alone a yeah. lot because yeah. i found out that that's how I gained weight. I there's was like a, happy there's and a peer fat pressure to it. Yeah, there's and like this. Like, yeah, there's there's almost like, and I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to phrase this. I want to figure this there's out comedically. Love food. There's love and food. I'm Italian. I, you don't have to tell me. Yeah. But then there's all there's this other there's this other thing that's well, a it makes people uncomfortable when you're avoiding things, and b there's like this weird like there's this, this weird gap, and there's too. this secondhand runoff of food. But if you're hanging out with somebody, if they're eating fries, you're gonna eat their fries. Exactly. They have bacon. I'm, I'm an external eat eater. Bacon. I've always you don't eat their bun. You can eat their bun. You know? I remember going through a, um, a psychology course and they're talking about peanuts being on a bowl on a table. Yeah. And whether they're in the shell or whether they're not. If they're not in the shell, you and I are more likely to eat it. Interesting. But the external, you know, the external eater is not really going to work that hard at the shelled nuts. But yeah. the other person is like, oh, I'll work at I'll it. So it's it. like, how hard are you willing to work for your food? Interesting. You know, and you think about and that. Then the, and then the too. OCD in me says the, the, the ones the with the shells up. on them are cleaner. Yeah. Then the ones without the shells oh, yeah. on them, because there's that's the old thing is there's the you know there's there's shit on the yeah on the on the bar nuts. Well, there's always shit on your nuts. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's, that's oh poignant. my god. That's speaking a poignant. Of, that's a hashtag. I, think. I um can't. So speaking of with speaking of shit <laughs> on the nuts, I literally like the guy that I was hanging out with, and just guys in general, them talking about just like. Um, nuts and like being comfortable with each other and he's yeah. like going talking about going into the bathroom and I'm like I don't want to talk about you shitting I'm like he's like you know what happens I'm like no talk about I totally shitting or, or talking or about talk, it or knowing I like or to just, talk while I'm shitting no <laughs> look this is the thing I'm okay with those guys who want to pretend that women fart bubbles okay yeah I've, Not, s- I've seen the videos and <laughs> yeah and I'm but I'm also totally realistic too. I call it a vagina. I call it a penis. Yeah. Like I don't like. I understand the bodily functions too. But okay. also because I understand the bodily functions so much, I understand that while you're sh- sitting on the toilet, shitting on the toilet, it may plop. Water may come up. If it's a bad poop, it may spray oh. places. And if you're expecting well, me to look at you in a sexual way <laughs> after you come out of that bathroom and think about the shit splatter that might be on your balls <laughs> and think about baby, come okay, over here and put those is, in my mouth, okay. I can't. This is getting this is getting aggressive for me. Um, <laughs> so number one, <laughs> number one, agree or disagree? <laughs> you, well, I don't I don't put anybody's balls in my mouth, so I'm fine. But uh, number one, I um. If if you're if you're constantly in a situation where you're splatter splattering, I mean uh, you, you don't want to be with that guy in the that's first a real, place. That's a real diet problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh um, God, can I just say um, I'm going to put this out there? Since I have been vegan, since yeah. I've been eating well, beautiful shits. I, yes, I have not had a nasty shit in so long. Cheers to that. Cheers to not once you having figure nasty out, Once shits. you figure out your body. So that's the thing. Once okay, you so that's the thing. Your body, that's what so I've I was been doing. so I was uh so I, I used to eat edamame, whatever, whatever. Then I went then I went overboard on soy. I was dating a girl when we I, I was trying to be supportive. Uh, I did soy everything. Yeah. Soy milk, soy uh soy cheeses, I'm eating tofu, I'm doing everything. So yeah. I over I overdo my body, overshoot the mark. Did and, you start to get acne? Well from what I understand about uh like well, I, from what I understand from uh, soy, especially the way it's processed here, is men can't overboard on soy because they end up start. It's almost uh, it's almost like an estrogen, estrogen. quality. Yep, for so sure. I I just started getting lethargic. I was tired. I was whatever. Mm-hmm. And so since then, now if I and this has been ten years, but mm-hmm. since then, now if I eat edamame, soybeans, anything with soy in it, mm-hmm. uh, it's just the reaction I get in my stomach is horrible. Really? Really? It's there's no there's no any there's no like day of, but next day. Well, you talk as long as we're talking about splattering on our balls in the bathroom. Just the smell that we're dealing with is is horrid. And it's that getting older thing. And it's like dealing with a younger guy and he's gotten three years older and he's like, I feel like you got older and hotter and I got older and fatter. I'm like, that's because your body's changing because like we said, like there's we shouldn't be getting fatter by 23. 
Well, I mean, let's, you, you know, want to know if fair. they're drinking though. Those those guys. Who, yeah, well, so that's the thing. So you do. Alcohol, so your life, I don't drink alcohol. So you're anymore. yeah, that's the thing. So your life, right? Like, so all these patterns that you make, and you just think that you can keep those going. Eventually, oh, sure. you hit a mark. Now you're forty. And, and you can't and your you can't drink like you used to. Yeah. You can't eat like you used to. Yeah. You can't do the things like you used to. So every day you got to be readjusting, recalibrating for sure to your body. And I think that's so important, and that's so hard. And so many Americans don't have that luxury. So many people go to work at six a.m. and don't come home until eight p.m. and haven't eaten all day. And you know, like I think about I think how people fortunate fi- people I find a way to eat. Oh yeah, I mean it's like. They're not eating I, food, I, and that's but why they're I, eating and something. And that's why I told I told you every meal is a success. Yeah. Because if I counted it as every day, I would say next Monday. I feel next Monday. I, I feel that way. Start. I feel that way. So I, instead I, that's of why saying next Monday, I'm like next meal. That's why I think that's why I think this cheat day thing is is bullshit. Because no no matter what process you're in, if you're waiting for your cheat day to eat the things, you sh- you just yeah. you should find a way to remove those things completely. Yeah. If you th- if you think whatever ideology food wise, mm-hmm. if you think the thing that you're not supposed to eat is this and you pick a day to eat that thing you're not you're not being successful you got to cut the thing out of and and i think completely to start off with i think it is kind of important when i started off and i was you know 240 pounds i it was important for me to have my fatter day sure my saturday fatter day See, but it's a slippery slope isn't it it, it, it was because then was you move your saturday slope. to saturday and monday exactly and that's why it just i kind of needed to drown it out of my head and be like you know what if you kind of want it you know either think about what you maybe really want instead and don't keep it in your house i figured yeah. that out I oh yeah not, i can't I don't, put any, I don't put any food in the house i can't do I only put healthy options in my house. This is okay. So this is an interesting thing that I that I've wanted to explore. It's hard as a comedian, especially. I have a general douchebaggery about my appearance and mm-hmm. about my my aura, so that so that when I want to talk about a bigger topic, sometimes it'll it'll turn the crowd off, right? So that's an yeah. important thing as a comedian. What is you something gotta, you, you wanted make sure. to talk so about? So I want to talk about the way we handle food and, and the fact that we think that that that. Um, that getting that getting fat is is laziness, and I and I really think it's hard work to get fat. Now, there's 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 the both sides, right? So like, pure laziness, you're gonna get skinnier, uh-huh. right? And uh, but but putting all the work in, like when I when I eat a whole tub of ice cream, like that was hard work, and I know it was hard work, and it feels like hard work the next day. Uh, um, yeah, forgot, you're, you're, you're you're but the, but I forgot right. the point I was trying to make. Um, what did you what did we what did I just launch off of? Um. Crap. The uh, well, yeah, because it's a whole because it's a whole thing in my head about about be so we, about be, well. Being here's fat, the thing: is we think is, is is and we kind of like in a way we like look at somebody who's skinny, mm-hmm. and a lot of times we'll go, oh well, either it's genetically just how how it is, and then and then fuck that person, yeah, because they don't have my problems, yeah, you, you don't have my which, life, yeah. which isn't true. Mm-hmm. Or we we look at somebody else's diet and we go, well, that's more work than I'm willing to put into it, and that, and that you're not really living you're like, life. I, I can't do that anyway, so I'm just you're not, not really living to. life because you because I want to eat cheese and you don't want to eat cheese. But here's the reality. Mm-hmm. It's fucking hard. It's hard to be skinny no matter what. From a metabolism standpoint, from a, 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 everybody uh-huh. that's skinnier than you and has a body that you think that you want, that is hard work. Uh, and nobody's nobody's doing nothing. Yeah. Everybody's doing all of the things to have what they have, whether it's fat or skinny. When mm-hmm. you're fat and you convince yourself that you're not doing anything to get to that place, you got to look at your life and you got to understand where you're at. Mm-hmm. I, I put on 40 pounds after after I lost uh, my I basically needed knee surgery mm-hmm. and I put on 40 pounds by eating a lot and eating uh-huh. the way that I was eating when I was running full time. Yeah. And so. You know, you got to again, you got to recalibrate at the end and you got to go and then stop looking at other people and then yeah. thinking what they're doing is wrong. And there's so, you know, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out this whole balance thing. It's like, OK, either you need to be eating good. It's what you said. It's denial. And it's and it's like what what we were told. Oh, yeah. As My parents think that. That the way that I'm eating now is, is insane is not yeah. is not the way to be healthy. I was raised on a farm. Yeah. I, I raised pigs yeah. growing up. I was in 4-H. I showed pigs. Wow. Okay. Do you eat pigs now? So no, I I'm not eating any food. Yeah. I'm not eating. But even, any, but even prior to vegan, but, were you were you eating pigs? Um. Yes. You know what? I've always my mom ruins ham steak growing up for me because she just like let it sit for too long. Yeah. But I loved bacon and I did all that and stuff. Um. But 
you know, when I moved out of my parents' house, you know, and when I started like looking at my diet, I was like, you know what? I don't know about red meat. I'm like, plus red meat is uh, is expensive. So I would yeah. only eat red meat when I went out. Right. So then I stopped going the out. The fancy though, because, meal. Yeah. I'm like, because then going out, I'm like, that costs money. And I need to like, I always try to be pretty conservative. Like I'm sure. kind of a hermit. You know, sure. I work from home. I'm like, don't go out because yeah. if I go out, I spend money. And yeah. I'm really bad at it's, that. It, so is, it, is, it is a weird thing that once you start, you know, working from home and you really realizing how little it costs just to live mm -hmm. as a human then yeah then when you go out and you just want to get anything you're yeah. like this is uh, this yeah. is crazy this yeah. is free ha at home I, you know i um and that's the same thing about like cooking too i'm like i go out and you go to applebee's and yeah. it's this sorry applebee's it's this shit food no, that has been prepared let's shit on them. and okay and it's just like there's not a lot of food in the food that everybody eats and, and, and it's daily not basis. prepared well. I could I could make you some bomb ass fucking mashed potatoes, and yeah. they could be like cauliflower mashed potatoes, and you're gonna taste Applebee's and be like, that's shit compared to what Charlie made. And right. It's like, and I made that for cheaper too. Right. And right. I made right. it at home. Right. And you have to be all around these, you know, people and stuff. Like, I'm just a natural. Like, I grew up on a farm. I'm quite all right being at home. Yeah. Like, I'm a hard worker. Like, I think about it. I'm like, I break my nails all the time because I'm just like. I put everything like it's elbow grease and yeah, everything. Even yeah. like when I'm cleaning, I love to clean at home. But my dad's thing was like, are you working out on the farm with me or are you inside with your mom helping out? So it was like two choices. Work is, is both. Work of them. is both of them. Yeah. 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 And I that's like that. why I like that. I mean, I'm constantly up and doing something. I'm always like cleaning something though. I kind of hate yeah, there's it. A, Ugh, and this is what OCD. I find with successful people is, is there's always like, I just need so I'm staying at this house here in Lauderdale and last night I got in and and basically there's nobody here and I didn't have the Wi-Fi and this and that so basically I got here and I was just like I can't do anything like I can't do any of the work it's like 10 o'clock I don't even in Lauderdale and it's just like so it felt like for normal people it's like oh I get to relax whatever's a pool is a whole thing mm -hmm. it felt like for a second I was like I got I can't even accomplish anything yeah, here. Like, like I can't I just get... sit and do nothing it's not possible yeah. I think I hate that all the time like I love and resent my phone all at the same time because yeah. I can do absolutely everything right. from it. But I realize like if I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, I could be tweeting something. Oh, I could be posting something on my Instagram. Yeah. I could be editing a picture. I could be making a banner. Like yeah. I could be, oh my God. I could, the I other could, problem I with the phone is that you'll be running hard in this direction and the phone hits you and you got to run in this direction. And then you got, mm -hmm. and then the, and then somebody else texts you and you got to go this direction. Oh, yeah. And you get an I'm email. In the, you I'm in go the middle direction. of doing something and I get, you know, something on my Snapchat from one of my guys who, you know, was paying for it so it's like i have to answer yeah. them and right. then it's like oh crap and then i got an email i got an email sitting in my thing right now about doing a documentary yeah and about the teledictonics okay and stuff um and then know. we are we're at this we're at this place in society where like as if it's sitting on responded to we're like oh my god the opportunity is gonna go it's i, I gotta know, get to it now i know although i'm just like I always think about it, and I'm like, okay, do I want to be? Do I want to do a documentary? I'm like, yeah. oh god. What so are wait, what is say? it about? It's about teledictonics. I don't know what any of those words okay. are. Okay, <laughs> um, it has a lot to do with <laughs> over the internet sexual experience. Interesting. Okay, um, there is um, the Cairo. Okay, the Cairo is a masturbator. You know the fleshlight. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The Cairo is um it's a masturbator sleeve, but it's okay. almost like a box. Yeah. And it sits over, but it has these um sensor sleeves in it. So okay? you just leave it on? You can leave it on you, yeah. And so like over the internet or somewhere um like even on the phone or something. Yeah. And I have a dildo and I can put it in my mouth, I can put it in my vagina and there's sensors. And it on responds that and they respond oh, to that's each crazy. other. So it's like, you know, the whole idea of us wearing like sex suits yeah. and being able to like have sex with someone um the lovents yeah um, did you see demolition man i didn't and he I had that scene where it was like this immersive thing and it was like he was like that's what sex is now and he puts this headset on and they're far on. away yeah. yeah actually they're sitting across from each other and he's put this thing on and exactly. he's like it's this immersive experience but you but it's like you're sitting talk. across from the person so like they've they've jumped don't a touch, shark yeah. to that place where it's like that's gonna be better yeah. Than actual sex eventually. Yeah, yeah. And they think, you know, I, that's what porn, you know, camming now is a way to do that and everything, like with our love ends toys and how I can put it inside and it vibrates and it's a way, I'm like, it's a way for you to like, it's foreplay yeah. for us. I'm yeah. like, it's like, while I'm fucking myself, you're fucking me too. I'm yeah. like, y'all are running a train on me but, right now. Like, but it's great. <laughs> the, I, you know, what's so the problem, I think, with people are starting to, the concern is, uh, 
there are people that don't go out and and I don't, I don't I hate using the commodified words, but like it's those people that don't go out and actually like retrieve or get sex because they can just because they get it at home. They can get it at home For sure. on their thing. So then th now the the social structure of their life is removed. Yeah. They can be as much of a weirdo as they want because they don't have to ask the oh, other yeah. person for the crazy thing that they want. Yeah. Right. It's the same. It's the same thing with the guys that only go to prostitutes because that's. That becomes the commodity of it. They're, that's they're why, not to talk. They're not to that's whatever. Why take them over. Put the money in the Sex work account. is work. Yeah. Because there's a need for everything. Yeah. Even with teledigonics and you know, the advancements that could be bad that could lead you these love them. It's your recluse your, it's, people yeah. to even more reclusivity. Yeah. You know. There's still a market for it. Sure. As much as there's even more. A need, it grows every day. You know, like. I would love to start a company, you know, porn is so important to people now and, you know, people making at home porn, people still want to do that. Yeah. And I think there's so many girls who would like, I'd love to do that, but they want to make sure it's like good lighting and everything. Yeah. I'm like, I want to provide, I'm like, I want to get a whole women crew of video pictures, yeah. makeup and everything come into your house we do the woman's makeup and it is like the whole porn experience oh, that's cool. you know for like the everyday person and stuff because every day everyday people watch porn they want to be in porn yeah. they want to live that life fine you actually want to have that like that experience let's do it and yeah let's do it with your loved one let's get those pretty pictures for yeah. you let's get like something classy for you guys sure you yeah know? that yeah the boudoir uh photo market is like taken off in the last yeah couple of years. i mean let's what is it glamour shots for porn yeah you know yeah i mean and you know it's about women feeling comfortable in it and i think it's you know it's that consent of wanting to do it and stuff so but yeah Anyway. Tella, was it Tella? Teledictonics. Teledicton. I think I'm saying that right. Teledictonics. Dictonics. Is the is the word dick? The word it dick is, is in it? Yeah. Okay. It's right. it, it's got Teledictonics. Like a dick it's All got right. a dick in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. So yeah. so okay so you th so what I what I'm doing is I'm I'm doing I'm doing like a ketogenic diet, uh, and I don't eat for. The majority of the morning, which makes everyone uncomfortable. So, are you fasting for so many hours? Right. So I okay. only eat. So more. So I look at it like I only eat for the eight hours. So basically, I had a buddy who said, okay. "Just Google was just telling me about intermittent this. fasting. Yes. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. You d you decide for yourself what it is." Yeah. I I read a couple articles and I was like, "This actually." This makes sense makes a sense. with with how our bodies work for and b break, with how my fast, lifestyle breakfast. works. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Well, and then the interesting thing, the the the, the most interesting component of the whole thing is that uh, breakfast mm -hmm. is like the worst meal. Like it's like it's the it's not the one that you should be focusing on. And we put all this time and energy into it. Mm -hmm. And you also look at what we eat at breakfast, and it's none of the things that should ever go into your body. Like really? we just we just put you all know, these. I haven't. I haven't. You know what? I've been juicing so much, sure. and I love it. Like yeah. this morning, I had like a cucumber kale pineapple with like, like mango all juice yeah. and I use colloidal silver and flaxseed oil yeah. and it's just like I love it. They're yeah. like so fresh tasting. So my understanding now of fasting was very different than it was when I when I started before starting to research is there there are people that just don't eat solid food mm -hmm. and they're they're fasting. I mean they're they're still getting nutrients, they're still juicing, they're still doing things like that and then because they're not actually eating the act of eating, then that's still a fast. So a guy like oh, wow. Dick Gregory I think fasted for like twenty five years. You don't want to trust that guy, though. <laughs> you know, Dick Gregor, they, well, okay. yeah, I, you know what? Mostly because <laughs> my parents said you never trust a guy with two first names. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dick Gregory, Dick Gregory was a very influential uh, black stand up comedian. Actually, he just died like a couple weeks ago. Oh, um, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I don't trust him. <laughs> sorry about that, Dick. <laughs> so it's fine. Well, it, it it also doesn't it doesn't prove anything that he died like he died. So, but he was like nine. Yeah. He was like ninety two. But so. Um, but yeah, it's it is it is hard to talk about Dick Gregory like a couple weeks after he died because you're like, dude, this guy <laughs> fasted for like, yeah, but where is he now? You're like, well, <laughs> yeah, he's dead. He so you're like, right. You know what? You're right. But you know <laughs> what? If his age and his standard of you know his standard of living, yeah, if he, he had held a good up. quality of he life, up, yeah. like how did he go? Like, he just died. He's 91. You know, oh. sometimes you die. Sometimes, sometimes people die. Sometimes people die, and I think we don't know how to handle it in this country. That's interesting to me. I 
they, I'm reading the Asa Akira book, and she was yeah. talking about like how she wants to just do heroin and to die. die. Yeah. yeah, people say that. Yeah, but then I talk to people that have done heroin, and they're like, heroin's not the best drug. Mm. It's not. Mm-mm. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I've never done. Well, I've never. D- I don't do drugs for the most part. I, I don't find that. Like sometimes, you know, I'm a comedian. People are doing smoking weed. Sometimes I'll get involved. Sometimes I'll, I'll accept a, an edible, and then I get really nervous. I'll like bite the corner off, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll like eat it. I'll like eat a corner every day for like twelve days. So of course, nothing. There's oh no. I'm getting yeah, no you're results. Getting no, yeah. Nothing. Um, like I'm. You're just I just wasting get, calories. I just get freaked. I just get freaked out uh, about everything. Like I don't think that there's a drug that has the th- feeling that I want to have. Like that I'm not already feeling yeah, in my life drugs are for sad people are. drugs are for mostly sad people i think, you think? I, I do my buddy told me about uh uh, uh dmt do you know about dmt of course i know that <laughs> <laughs> so he goes look man it's a great experience he said listen uh, uh when i took dmt the time continuum stopped uh, i was yeah. floating around in the world uh, i didn't know where i was basically he said he met god and yeah. dmt proved to him that there's an afterlife yeah and his story proved to me that i'm never gonna do dmt (laughs) like that scared the shit out of me you know you know the emotional and the experiences that you have while on psychedelics and while having mind altering drugs and everything um is very it's very personal sure you know um i have friends who will shroom not like on a regular basis yep. or anything, but they shroom and they shroom by themselves for moving experiences yeah. and for realizations in their lives. There's like little pockets so. of things. And so yeah. on that note, it's, I, I did know, recently it's, it's do shrooms. Of, did you? <laughs> yeah. It's all, look, I believe in everything in moderation and I believe everything in balance. And I yeah. think just as like my diet is in balance, I think if you handle things at a certain moderation, like... And don't use it in an abusive, in an unhappy way. Right. You right. know, right. like I didn't, I don't do shrooms. You know, you're told not to do shrooms when you're, <laughs> you're told you told know, not to do, yeah, you're told state. not to do yeah, everything. You yeah. don't do it when you're in a bad state, yeah. you know, because your mind is opened up more. And if you're thinking about, you know, your breakup with your girlfriend and the death of your grandmother and you opened up your mind, your mind is going to go to those things right. and want to. Let's talk about it. Explore them, yeah. Explore that dark hole. But in a sense, we're so closed off. I don't. I don't think that's a bad idea. Oh, I I think think sometimes you need to explore that stuff. I think there's. Look, they're these, just wor- the problem things, with mushrooms. From what I understand things. is that the trip is so long that if you get into this bad trip and then you start worrying about it, it just it just spirals. Spiral. Yeah, but also what I think you have to realize though too is you have to be at a state where you can look at yourself and be like. Look, this is a psychedelic drug. This is something that's working its way through my system. Right. Like you can take yourself out of this. Let's go Just to a good the place. Fu- rub the fuzzy rub the furry wall. wall. <laughs> rub the furry wall. Yeah. yeah. It's like you need to find your in it spot. You need to find take yourself away from that situation or those people. Yeah. You know, like and that's life in general. And if you think about it, like, why aren't we doing that anyway? Right. We need to self soothe ourselves. Yeah. You know, rub that furry wall. Like life is that. I agree with that. You know, it, you shouldn't just think of it as a trip like it's a trip because and literally from you going for your in your room and starting your you know acid shroom trip and they're coming out here you will feel like you just went through so much emotionally and like physically and you thought about so much things yeah that's, that's why it's called a trip i agree with because that. there's so much you experience within such a short amount of time yeah and in order to unplug it's, but it's also not even that plug it's yeah it's that. more it's more uh, what you're saying it's more like we ignore all this stuff yeah, all we, day long. We ignore our truths. We all don't want to talk about it. You know, mm-hmm. we use, we use expressions like I love I love people that don't know what the expression is because that means that they're actually thinking for themselves. They don't just they say things like six of one, half a dozen of the other. Once you're using for expressions, sure. like you didn't know have give an inch, take a mile, like yeah, because you mile, because yeah. you think with your own brain. You're not using like. You I'm know, not using what other people have told me right. to say. All of these years. things that we've that we, that we've created and just in universal truths that we thought are real but aren't. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so that's I think that's you're right. I think that's what drugs do. That's what mushrooms did for me was mm-hmm. was it made me just like it broke apart like little pieces of things that we. It makes you think about things you think are like, real and they aren't. And it's so you know, last time I did it, I'm like, you just feel like when you actually like 
can almost just like see the energy yeah bouncing yeah off of people and you see this like halo and this trail and someone you're like you realize like your energy and i'm just energy by myself and we can choose to like go about this world not just just being by ourselves or we choose to reach out and touch that energy and react to it yeah. and engage in it and talk with it and there's this energy in talking and in feeling and like being emotionally invested in someone when they go oh ow be like oh what happened like to emotionally invest and to invest that energy like is gorgeous and beautiful and to take the time to even think right. about that yeah during your trip is i think so self growing in itself yeah. and so self-actualizing because they always say a life living what is it what expression what expression that what we don't know <laughs> oh, what is the expression i don't know a life unexamined is not a life worth living worth living yeah there you go and i truly believe that you know i remember in college you know sitting and in i think that, that's a quote more than that's an expression that's a quote from somebody smart i don't know who, yeah, I don't know who that is well for world ralph Waldo Emerson. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Einstein said some smart things, well, he too. He was a smart fella there. Uh, yeah. it turns out Mark Twain said some smart things. He, he did some things, yeah. You know, Mark Twain did uh, stand-up comedy? I heard I found that out recently. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. You know who I think should do stand-up comedy is Stephen King. I just saw It. Really? And now it's not, an, it's not a new story, but It is fantastically funny. But wait a minute. Did... You've seen the new It? I saw the new It. It, it I, made me I saw, so I, happy. I, or I heard that they... It's not the same story. They, they I don't, did something I didn't, different with it. So that's it. the thing. I didn't see. The, I haven't read the book, and I didn't see the original movie. Ugh. It's one of those ones where you have those porns that are sitting around. I don't. <laughs> I have the original <laughs> it, and I never saw it because I was yeah. like, some, "Here's the thing. I don't know. Sometimes you know your scale of of what affects you, right? So like, I know how much booze I can drink without getting sick. I know how much weed I should smoke or not smoke. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, at this age I can only do a couple uh, uh, roller coasters in a row. I don't know." confidently how far into the horror realm I can get in my house by myself without getting really? freaked out. Okay, so are you afraid of clowns? No. And I and I and I and I, and I and I generally am not afraid of horror movies and I, and I find them fun and funny, but I there's Dude, there's I'm afraid of the one that I, I'm oh afraid of the one that I don't know is going to fuck up my my thoughts. So So I didn't see the original list. That's so the whole point. You need to deal with your own truth. Yeah, I need to watch all the like, horror movies and like, realize that like I'm fine. Like I'm not I'm not gonna be scared. Do you know what? I have not to seen death. um my growing up I didn't watch horror movies. Yeah. My parents like Freddy and yeah. Chucky yeah. and Jason. I never watched I any saw of those. Candyman at a party with my sister and it fucked me up. It was scary. You, <laughs> See, I couldn't go I couldn't go to the bathroom. The thing. A lot of a kids who were like, yeah. Oh, I watched that growing up, it like fucked me up. Fucked me uh, up. Uh, growing up and just even learning and hearing about Bloody Mary. Yeah, in the oh. mirror. Right? It's the same thing oh as a candy God. man. Yeah, no, and then you're standing in front of the mirror and, like and it's dark and you're like, like no, and you're looking no, at the mirror no, no. and you're yeah. like, I'm not going to say like, candy man you. three I'm times. Do, I'm not yeah, going to do gonna that. Be that. And then kid. you fucking do like, it. And then, yeah, because it's like that kid, it's like, you just want to be killed, don't you? Like, <laughs> fuck you. You deserve that. And yeah. I never wanted to be that person to be like, you know what? She asked for it. Right. You know? Look, look, if they find you murdered in your bathroom, because you said Bloody Mary a couple times. You, yeah, you definitely you deserve it. it. Yeah. yeah. You definitely deserve yeah, it. Yeah, I know? didn't, you know, my parents didn't, okay. So, like, my parents didn't like scary movies, so I didn't watch scary movies. But you know what? I love hauntings and I love exorcisms. But I have to watch In real life. someone. Well, no, well, no movies. Okay, yeah, movies. okay, okay. I mean, I like the ones that are, like, based off, like, The Conjuring and everything. Yeah. Oh, Oh, I love the contract. Oh, if they, and if they just like, write this is based on a true story. Oh my god, I'll that pee could my be pants a lie. already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they fuck up your life. If they said it was based on a true story, we'd be like, dude, that shit really happened. God. And dairy. It's yeah. ma everything's made up, but we would believe it. I, we I, wanna believe it. The Blair Witch thing, we wanna believe it. That's all you we know, want. No, I couldn't I couldn't watch that movie because it just made me sick. Really? Oh, cause just because it's like it was all over yeah, the yeah, place yeah. and it was all it's jostling, yeah. and I'm like, that just yeah, made my crazy. stomach. It was like riding a roller coaster yeah. for a whole entire movie, and so, then you're just watching her nose drip. I don't remember specifics of that movie, but what? So what were you? What were you saying about it? You're saying people said it's a different story. You didn't see it. Did you uh, see the original one? I did see the original one. It's been a long time, yeah. um, but I loved it, and I've never like I don't honestly have any fears. I'm yeah. not really in life. 
Oh, look at you just over here with no so fears. Self- yeah, look at me. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I'm not, not, like, afraid of rodents, and I'm not afraid of spiders, and I'm not afraid of... Well, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, because I opened the, the drawer earlier yesterday, and uh, there was a cockroach. Now, I've seen cockroaches before, but I opened the drawer looking for, like, uh, coffee K-cups, oh. and this motherfucker went... Whoa, 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 Across the thing, and oh, I, geez, yeah. I want to tell you that I was the most masculine person on earth, <laughs> and I was just like, it didn't even phase me. But I jumped and screamed a, a sound that I didn't know I could make, because like, it, I didn't know it was gonna happen. It, that's the thing. With well, the horror movie, you know it's gonna me. happen. Yeah, I mean, the music totally tells you, like, why can't they hear that music? Yeah, so. creepy and crawly <laughs> is sometimes scary. So my point is, you're, I want you to kill the cockroach. I really need you to you kill the cockroach. Li- you did it <laughs> though. No, I couldn't get them. You know how fucking fast they are? Yeah, yeah. I had a you knife and like I was hard... trying to get it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard thing it was about in a cockroach. The knife and then you have to worry about the babies on the back and everything. Right. Oh, and I then, heard that. And then you like worry. And then I'm like, after the shoe, it's just the grossness of them. I can get, like, honestly, I can get over everything. But I just need that time to process it. You know, like, feelings just are. It's just how we process yeah, them and how sure. we deal with them that. You know, determines that. Like, right. I've, I've been tearing down a shed and a mouse, like, ran up my leg and yeah. off my shoulder. He went up your body? Oh, yeah, went oh, up my whole body. Dude. And I was like, eh, and I flicked it off. Yeah. And my dad's like, if that had been your mother or your sister, they would have passed out. Yeah. And I was like, well, what am I going to do now? Like, yeah. what am I going to do now? Like, I felt and I was like, Bleh. Yeah, once you, yeah, once you. Once you reconcile, my body the was thing, already in shock. Yeah, once you reconcile the thing and you get it all, then you're fine. But uh-huh. yeah, it's just like that that second where you don't have control. <laughs> you know? Oh God, yeah. I don't know if it would have like stayed on me and like went in. Yeah. I when probably, when I in probably would have gotten naked. On went my in where? Then my clothes. Oh or something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like I had on, I had on boots, and we were tearing down a shed. Yeah, a shed. Yeah. So I had on boots and jeans and a shirt, and I had like a handkerchief like wrapped around my face and everything. So yeah. I felt a little and like. Yeah. Off me I see. Way. I don't know. He here's the thing. He didn't want to be on you as much as you mm-hmm. didn't. Want we were tearing down his house. I felt kind of bad for yeah. him. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's he didn't. He's not paying rent. Very true. He didn't ask to be I there. Mean, very true. So fuck him. There's technically there's a new shed in its place. I'm sure he lives there. Yeah, I'm sure. I hope he doesn't though. That's Your parents are still in sure. Indiana. Yeah, I my par- my parents have just my parents. You were talking about okay, so you always talk about monogamy. Yeah, on the podcast. My, so here's my, what happened, and this and I gotta apologize. I'm gonna apologize to the to the listeners. Uh, I we did we did like 30 episodes in a row. And mm-hmm. so what happen, What happens is your brain's only capable of so much. So I realize now that maybe I did too many in a short, short period of time. So everything was in my head just kept with, just kept recurring. Well, you think about it that you're at a certain point in your life. That's true, too. too. And you want to know other people's like. That's true, So too. were you thinking about monogamy then at that time? Like I was I was toying with an open relationship at the time and, and yeah. the success of what happened with, with the one that I, I started. I just wanted to let you know, one, I'm yep. currently reading um, this amazing book. It's called The Ethical Slut. Okay. It's not a new book. And this is by... Oh, fuck, I'm going to have That's to... That's okay. Up. We'll look it look up. Look it up. I, you know what? One and of the best things I got was my Audible subscription. Yeah. And I started... I, I started doing that. I'm mm-hmm. like a big Amazon person, but I yep. can't read it on the, on the device. I don't have... Yeah, the, it's not the something PDF ab- file. Something about the sitting with the book is the, is the thing for me. I had a friend who was just saying... He's like, I wish I had the PDF file along with that. Something I absorb it better when I'm being read to and I can read along with. And I'm Interesting. exactly the yeah, same Yeah, that's way, a whole other so, thing, too. So, but the but ethical wow, slut is book. fantastic, and it talks about you know however you want to open your relationship, and it totally works for me. And I think being me myself being an ethical slut, you know, like I consider myself that because it's like I don't do it for gain or anything, and right. it's just like I don't. It's it Here's what I think is the takeaway from what I learned from being in an open relationship. Uh, I've gotten to the point in my life where, where I don't think I have a jealousy thing anymore, uh, especially when, I yeah. think it's the open communication that makes it the whole thing. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think in an open relationship, whether you're, whether, see the people just hear open relationship, they go, oh, well, we're going to fuck other people. But it's not, that's not the point. Every relationship is totally different. Every, when you, when I was with my ex, it took a year and a half of us just having the really just having the talk yeah. of opening our relationship sure. because what initially happens is you start with what aren't you okay with? Don't do what this. What are the rules? Don't do yeah. that. Right. Don't do this. How I'm much do okay I want to know? This. Exactly. And it's establishing those rules and it's establishing those boundaries for so long till you finally feel like, you know, 
know what? I feel like we're finally ready yeah. for us. And I know that you're going to be okay if I go out on a date with her. And, you know, like, and I told you I'm not going to sleep with her. We're not going to do anything. And I'm going to come home. And you can ask questions. You cannot ask questions yeah. about it. And, but it's going to be Oh, it's going to be okay. Here's what I find is the most interesting part is I think we're not honest with our with our partners. Yeah. As a general rule, I think, A, uh, the person that I'm dating has no idea who who or what, what motivated me to fuck a person in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think who we fuck and why we fuck is a big part of who we are as people. Uh -huh. And I think, well, this is what I know from, so like I do a lot of road trips with comedians and sometimes you'll be in the car with them for, uh, too long of a period of 42 days. We drove to Alaska. Uh, yeah. This last round, I was in the car with a guy for 30 days. Sometimes, and, and I had a relationship with, the, with with my buddy where I could just go, look, man, I don't fucking want to talk to you today. I don't want to look at you. And you can say that to your friend. Yeah. And they go, I don't want to fucking look or talk to you today either. Uh -huh. But if you said that to your spouse, if you said that to your wife, I know. do you understand? <laughs> the like? You, in some you, relationships, <laughs> they would lose their mind. You would get a divorce. But you to... Would, but to be able to but look at your honesty. spouse and say, be like, I love you, but I need this day to myself. I got to go in the other room. And it's like, we're going to spend the day apart from each other. And I think that's one thing that has been so, like, I'm a Gemini. I'm a sign of communication. Yep. Like, there's no such thing as talking about too much. Right. Like, but sometimes there's no solution and you're just, you're just lapping. It's exactly. Well, I mean, but that's where you have to come to, you know, compromises or you figure out that maybe it's not going to work. And, you know, it's not always that one person wins and one person loses, you know, like, and the, the ethical slut, that book talks about it. And it's like, even talking about jealousy, I would honestly say I don't have jealousy, but you know what? That's not true. Yeah. Jealousy is something that you work on is something that you gauge every single day Yeah. because on a whole, I would say I'm not jealous because I'm very sexually confident. I'm confident in myself. Like right. if you're with me, if you're in a relationship with me, we can go out to the bar. I can hang out with my friends. You can go hang out with your friends and kind of go hit on a girl and I'm going to look over and be like, Oh yeah, I'm like she wants it. She can't have it though. Cause I know you're coming home with me. Right. But then there's also, you know, like if we're first, dating and you're still you know like you're still on tinder and i'm like oh, you're yeah. still on there you're still doing that okay <sighs> because jealousy is just you know an emotion it's something we, like you work through and it's something you have to process jealousy is 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 honestly a response to dishonesty so once you open up honesty across the board then mm -hmm. then the jealousy thing and again it comes down to the standpoint it's like you acknowledge maybe she's not at work and it's because you don't know who she fucks you don't know what kind of motivations that she has to have sex with somebody and once you know you go then you go well look obviously what she's saying to me has got to be true it, and that was the thing that was that was the the meeting of the minds with me me and this girl when we started the open relationship was this idea that like in normal life on occasion, even in your when you're in a relationship, mm -hmm. you meet somebody who you have an attraction to, and you might not know why, and and you might. And the thing is, when you go to your partner and you go, like, there's this guy at work, and like he's something's up with. I don't know. I yeah. like I, I want to explore this. Then your partner goes, you're not even allowed to look exactly. at people. Exactly. And as soon as this you're is told over, that. these are the rules. It's done. So then, what you do is you just take it inside, and then you, this thing fucking builds up, and yeah. maybe a thing that you wouldn't do because if you talked about it, it would go away. Uh -huh. Now you're in a closet in, in, somewhere instead of, blowing instead of each the part, other. Instead of the partner going, all right, let's talk about it. That's, tell me what you feel about it. Like, right. what do they, you know. What's the thing? What yeah. are you guys talking about? Yeah. Like, are you guys talking about something? Do they wear something? Do you like their perfume? Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. Who maybe does he we, remind maybe, you of? Yeah, maybe we should go have dinner with them so I can meet them. So yeah. I can maybe pick up on something. Or right. maybe we're going to have dinner with them and then we hit it off with them and we have a threesome with them. Yeah. Oh, how would that be? Like, you never know unless you just, like, sit with your partner and you actually, like, talk. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't do that. People humans, don't do that. Humans are the only people who are sexual from birth until death. You know, when babies get the diaper off, we touch our genitals, not because it's sexual, because it feels good. Yeah. Because it's something that's just so natural to that's us. Sexual. 80 year olds in the, you know, nursing home are getting they're STDs. fucking everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that like, you know this fact. Yes. The, my, the, the highest transmission rate of it. And you're in Florida, but the highest yes. transmission rate. Oh, yes. It's of even STDs higher here because this is, is where everyone comes to it, die. Is in uh, retirement in communities because they're just like, fuck no. Nobody's using condoms. Everybody's just uh -huh. fucking everybody because well, they're all. I don't need to wear a condom because right. I'm, gonna I'm not going to have any kids yeah. and everything. So We're chlamydia around the room, yeah. baby, just passing yeah. it around. My ex was an EMT. That's and so funny. Like she like heard that all the time. 
sleeping yeah. and stuff. So it's like, but we're sexual from birth until death. Meanwhile, well, my like grandfather just kept putting a retirement office. Yeah, he's, got all those he's also got Alzheimer's, so he's not. It's, look, he won't even remember if that you have shit. Alzheimer's is not cheating. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> if he like gets into a relationship with one girl, be like, "Hey, that Betty, the, that I can't even remember what I was." I doing think that was the plot. Helen. That was the plot of uh, of the Notebook, right? There was a scene where where he <laughs> comes in and she's got like a boyfriend all of a sudden. Or that might what? have been. It could have been a different movie. There no, was. There's two movies that I've movie. seen that had a that had an Alzheimer's thing. And one of them I can't remember the name of it. And one of them. Uh, you know what? I feel like I've seen something like. It's that. so stupid that I can't remember. Like, like what? That so I can't remember the name of the Alzheimer's movie. Well, I. You know what? I'm happy that there's a lot more important things on your mind than categorizing an old than remembering Alzheimer's. movies. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's like you true. think about the list of important things on our yeah. list of Well, listen, we're both in entertainment, so we got to understand that what we make should have some value to somebody somewhere, oh, right? For sure. But then it's God, like so. but then like what you said, it's like it's like nobody should care. Nobody should care about this podcast. In real yeah. life, nobody should. I love it, and I want. And I, I want. Know. You, you know. I'm like God. I hope people care. listen. I hope that people give a shit of what I say. When people are but, in my room, yeah. I'm like the fact that you guys are even here and you even give a shit about what I'm saying. Because the fact is, like, when guys are in my room yeah. and I have my clothes, I'm like, you're here, and I have my clothes on. You yeah. still like me? Thank <laughs> you. And I'm like, when I have my clothes off, I'm like, okay, it totally makes sense. I'm like, obviously, I'm like a girl. Like, yeah. You're gonna care about what I say. There's and there's, there's yeah, there's Everyone something abusive to to this environment that we put ourselves in where we're, we're we're like i don't care what any with like when we're home we're like i don't care what anybody I don't care, thinks I don't care, I don't and then care you get on stage and you're like no no why are you, sir why are you laughing this I'm, they're <laughs> all enjoying it why are you come on yeah. like that's how comedians we see the one guy who's yeah. not laughing and we go what is what we got to get that guy that's yeah. the only thing that's our only goal is to get that guy i think that's what makes you work harder though and that's what like but when you get that one guy, like oh yeah, you oh like, yeah, oh, the whole show was for him. The whole show is for that fucking yeah. guy. Have fucking you ever, smile, sir. Have you sir. ever pointed out that guy at the end of the show? And but like just to let you know, sir, I noticed that yeah. you were like the hardest. We'll call him so out. This oh, whole for sure. show was for you. You're welcome. Yeah, okay? we'll call him out. <laughs> yeah, that's well. That's what's great about live comedy is that is that you do have that opportunity and you can make yeah. that moment about it, and that and that actually enriches the experience for the rest of the crowd. Because when there's that's, a good that's show, about live. yeah, there's just something that you're gonna remember forever yeah. uh, about, and that's what I love. That's what I love about comedy. That's what I love about I. You know what? I love comedy too, and I love. You know, going to concerts because everyone is there for a good time. Yeah, everyone walks away in such a good mood. Like, man, that was funny, and yeah. their endorphins yeah. are going, and yeah. like even going they go out home into the and they parking fuck their lot. Wife. Yeah, and they're just like, and they're happy. <laughs> like they're driving on the way home, and they're talking about you know like good things. Yeah, it's just like oh, I just live off those good vibes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but both of our industries are are sort of predicated on the fact that the people don't communicate and that people are kind of like weird and quiet about sex and some of the other stuff in uh -huh. their in their life. Mm -hmm. And that's that's I find that super interesting. It's really funny because even even before I was in this industry, like always growing up, I was always that girl to talk about sex. Yeah. Um, I remember being um, how old was I? I was, you know, in my 20s and I'd come home for Christmas and my parents had given me a thermos and it was wrapped in there joking about the size of it and what it could be and everything interesting in front of my whole family and my whole family is you know joking around about it and they said something um and then my boyfriend had gotten me some jewelry and they're like oh at least it wasn't you know probably give you a pearl necklace too and we all ha 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 my whole family just like laughs and my grandmother who's 82 at the time she was like pearl necklace what's a, what pearl, is necklace? a pearl necklace and it's awesome because my whole family turns and looks at me and i'm like i got it Grandma and I like explain this to my grandmother. Yeah, this is pre-porn. I mean, and even my aunt and everything. She's just I'm always that I love person. that your family got who you were. Like, they yeah. That, even that early on. And I mean, I was that one. Um, my aunt, um, her husband um, passed away a few years ago from Lou Gehrig's, and you know, taking care of him, her sexual needs haven't been met. Like I'd sit around yeah. the table and I'm just like. And Julie, when's the last time you came? Yeah. And she was like, I don't know. And I'm just like, okay. You know, and I went home that Christmas and I brought at least you got her a like thermos? seven. I, uh, <laughs> I got at least, I brought at least seven, you know, vibrators and yeah. stuff home for my mom and my aunt and yeah. my cousins and stuff. I'm like, you guys don't have to pick them out in front of everyone. Go up into my room. I have everything in individual bags and stuff. Take a bag and take whatever you want home. Yeah. And stuff. Cause it's like, Sexual health is so important yeah. to me, and my family has always known that. 
funny enough, my family doesn't know about the porn. Yeah. Um, so this I would like to talk about. But mm -hmm. go ahead, finish your thought. It, but I mean, just even sexual health and just people being happy sexually has always been, and sex education has always just been something so important to me. So I find this. So people, when when you start in comedy, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe is because my act was. Uh, predicated upon some taboo stuff and things like that. And so people will come to the show and be like, I can't believe you would say that in front of your mother. For me, comedy has always come up from a place of, of pushing people's boundaries what, on whatever but end it is. But it's about talking about truth and talking about these yes. comfortable things and almost putting a spin on it. Sure. Well, no, or, or, or I, I would say... you. Most people would say it's putting a spin on, but I would say it's seeing it for how it really is. It's funny because it's true. Yeah, oh, and it and it's <laughs> but and it's a real thing that when it's like we said when you do mushrooms, it's a thing that we ignore. Mm -hmm. So I had a girlfriend in college who was a big drinker. I was part of her identity, part of her who she was as a person. I hadn't discovered comedy yet, mm -hmm. and she told uh, me one time I we I I, I wasn't a big I didn't like the drinking culture it didn't it wasn't like a yeah. social experience for me she was big she, I mean she would go and win beer pong every night because oh. she could because she could drink and she could throw the ball oh, yeah. and we saw a bunch of people outside on a graduation weekend with their parents playing beer pong and I was like see there it is that's how I would play beer pong is my parents uh -huh. and she was like are you kidding and I was like no she's like I would never drink in front of my parents she said, and I said, that doesn't make any sense. That's who you are as a person. She yeah. said, no, that's disrespectful to drink in front of my parents. I was like, but that's so not but ever having them behind understand. behind their back right. and get hammered. Well, how are your parents ever going to understand who you are as a person yeah. if you don't share that experience with them? So I'm a, I'm a person who talks yeah. dirty and talks about sex. So are you. So yeah. it's this weird line where it's like, of course, I'm going to talk about that. Even my mom's in the crowd. It's the same show yeah. because that's the person that raised me. The reason I am the way that I am is because of her. I know. And, it, and I always think about that because, like, I guess you can say – coming out to your parents because when girls get into the industry there is a coming out process yeah. and I don't think you know people understand that so Just what is it for you that 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 you are shielding them from you know what it's my mom knows that I do camming my sister knows everything yeah my dad, you know, it's just because they're from a small town. And I'm like, if they find out, you know, like the people who find out about it, they're the ones who's watching it anyway. Yeah. I just don't want them to even have to have that in their mind to know that they have to say something if they go to church and someone okay. asks about it. It's like, you know what? I'm going to leave you ignorant because as long as I can leave you, I can protect you, though, too. Sure. Like, let's not lie. You know who I am. You know who I've been my entire right. life. Right. Sexuality is something I've always been very open about. So for me to take this leap is not that big of, right. you know, right. something. And, and unfortunately, the only reason that you are calling into question is because of what society is saying. Right. Because they question how I make my money. You know, like this is the only job where people are like, well, they question it. Yeah. And I'm but like. But you have more control. I do. Than most people do. Yeah. About how you make your money yeah I which mean, is interesting people you know somebody working at, 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 at any other experience can be asked to do something that's outside of their description and they're just like okay i'll do that today whatever but it's like you can't do that in your industry like you're like no no no. these are the 11 things we agreed on you can't just add the 12th thing in you can't uh -huh. add the 13th thing in that's mm -hmm. not how mm -hmm. this works mm -hmm. so in, in a in a weird way you have you have much more control yeah, it's great because, you know, like I make my own rules and I tell guys, you know, when they're in my room, I'm like, if you don't like the way I run my page, you can get the Go fuck on. out. Yeah. Because, you know, like with the podcast, it's like, I hope you like me. And it's like, because this is who I am, because I really don't want to be anyone else. Because yeah. It's so exhausting. Yeah. And I live my life so hard trying to live my truest that it's right. like to pretend to be anyone else is so exhausting. Right. And stuff. So that's yeah. I started get, like I got a I got a couple people that were commenting on some of the stuff, and they're like, "Just let the girls talk." And it was like, I'm trying to figure out the format of this thing. It's like you know, the first 30, 40 episodes, you're just trying to figure out what you got, For what sure. the beast is, right? And then uh, and from the same notion, I was like, "Look, uh, if they don't like what I'm doing on the podcast, because I, I had a couple episodes, I was like, this is exactly what I want to be doing.' Yeah, and and, and if I you're was like, happy if they don't want to be doing it, exactly. then they don't. If then they're not listening it, to the right podcast. Me. There's so many people in this world now. There's so much of a market now that you can get to that they're gonna be just gotta find the ones out. that like what exactly. I'm, what I like doing, and then exactly. you're, you're good. Because if you're doing something that you're not passionate about and something that you don't care, you know, you're just doing it for other people, then you're just gonna give it up anyway. Yeah. So why not do exactly yeah. what you want to do, and 
you know, like the universe is telling you to do this. If people yeah. are telling you, you should do. You this know, is the like, fucking podcast, people. This okay, this is it. This is what you get. Well, they okay, listen. They listened for an hour and thirteen minutes, so I think they're. I think they're into it. Oh God, I hope uh, they are. <laughs> or, or they're or they're into you, and they want me to shut the fuck up. Which you know, <laughs> either way. Um. Well, so that's a. I don't know. Do you have closing remarks? We're we're at a we're at a, a period of time that I think uh, is where we should wrap. But uh. Yeah, just things that uh, things that we things that we launched and didn't finish talking about, anything like that. Not necessarily. I mean, we launched we launched we a lot of things. We talked a lot about about a lot of things. That's just yeah. how that's how I am. I'm yeah. kind of all over the place. I could tell. Well, I could tell when you walked in, we started talking, and I was like, I was like, no, no, no. I'm I was like, gonna, save this, save this for the yeah, podcast. Yeah, you're not gonna have to pry a conversation out of me. Because I've had I've <laughs> had I've had an hour of podcast. That was incredible that never made it to the recording do, doing this podcast where and I'm like, OK, let's start now. But it's like the first hour was amazing, too. It was like it was a whole episode. So yeah. I knew that immediately when you walked in that we that we were going to have a good episode. I, th I hope people enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, how can people follow you on the Internet? How can they find you if you yeah. want them to come to your rooms? Um, uh, You guys can follow me on Twitter at Charlie Hart XXX. I also have my um, Snapchat, Charlie Hart XXX. Instagram, Charlie J. Hart. I also can for Camp Soda. So it's nice. campsoda.com slash Charlie Hart. I also have my own website, charliehartxo.com, and I have OnlyFans. You got all the things. And Do you have a I, MySpace? Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Do you have a classmates.com <laughs> that we can find you on? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I actually do have something else. What's it? Um... What's the news? Do you have a Pinterest? What are the new? Do you have a, do you have a <laughs> you Flickr? You know what? Funny enough, I actually do have. No. <laughs> if anything. Oh, you know, and then through Camp Soda, I've got my voyeur cam. I've okay. got my 24 hour voyeur cam. No shit. Cam that's so just wherever bedroom. you are. So, so it's on right now. Yeah. While you're here. Right now. Yeah. So while you guys are listening to this, you guys can go to just watch. Camp they just Soda. Have it, they have it in the corner just in case. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's just like right above one of my mirrors. You know what's interesting so. is this is actually is that's probably the best security system. Oh, for sure. Ever. Because yeah. people will be like, yo, somebody's breaking into your house right now. Yeah. It was really interesting living in the Cam Soda house and having cams in the kitchen and yeah. dining room and living room and stuff. That was super interesting. And I love that. And hopefully I'll get back to that and stuff. But. I mean, I love the voyeur cam in my bedroom and I kind of live, you know, even me having that like whole hermit lifestyle yeah. and me working from home totally works because it's like I can be my weird cleaning, yeah. you know, squatting through the house person. And, and somebody's into it And somewhere. I'll do it in my bra and underwear, thank God. And some guys are like into, into it. it I'm like, thank yeah. God. I so. wish my fucking girlfriend would clean the house. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many guys who are just like... You know, because I cook on cam. Yeah, that's and what's I'll crazy like about sexuality, cam. relationships, everything is whatever little thing God, I can make that it you sexual. might be missing is sexy. It really, like it is. Just, just, and when you're really into somebody, that's the other thing is when you're really into somebody, like they're just, they just text you. They're like, oh, I'm at work. They're like, I just want, I would love to oh, fuck just you. Just love to watch oh, you. Like work. I'm at the ball yeah. game. Oh, I'd love to fuck you at the ball game. That's you one know? thing. I that's what I love about my job though is because I can get on cam and I can be absolutely anywhere. Like I cam in my car. Yeah. So I masturbate oh, in my car. I love all it. The yeah. Time. Oh yeah. And Dude, what's really had, funny is I'm like, guys, if you want to buy my car, do you know how much cum is all over oh. this whole car? <laughs> Dude, that's well. So that's <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah, they sell the panties. The thing that's really funny. Yeah, because I'm like, okay, I do sell the panties yeah. and I sell all that stuff. I'm like, yo, if y'all want to buy my Kia Soul my Kia 2015, my like, cummy Kia Rosie Soul. has been cummed in a That's lot. Like, you named her. Of... Why is she Rosie? She's white. Yeah, she's white. Why yeah. is she Rosie? Um, She's a little white Kia Soul. She just was like cute and little. And I think okay. someone said Rosie and I was like, it's so funny. My right. last thought before I went to bed last night was that I haven't named my car. Like I bought a car a couple months ago. My old car was called Rue. It's a Subaru. Uh -huh. And I bought a new Subaru and I haven't named it yet. And that oh. was the last thing I thought Ro before I passed out. You didn't think night. of Rosie, did you? No. Oh, no. you just thought no. of Peggy. I, I, I can't call. I don't think I can call it Rosie. You have to call yeah. it. So, I, I like I like these ambiguous sexuality names or like so my dog is Tess. So oh. it's like I just like these like, you know, kind of you like, like androgynous names. Yeah, a little bit for like for Charlie. Yeah, it's great. Do you know, There's I was Ryan beforehand. It. No shit. How yeah. did you spell it? R Y A N. Okay. Yeah. I thought for some reason you'd be like the R I A N. No, I didn't want to be that weird with it. I didn't want to be that but weird you spell with Charlie. Charlie different. I, yeah. Exactly, because there's another I E because there's like a boy and stuff. So. There's an exact 
Charlie Hart? I don't think not necessarily in there somewhere in this world. Oh, I Googled sure. it and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to be the stuff, only so. one. Yeah. yeah. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah. I mean, that's like the rules of porn. I'll find I, I got I got super lucky that there's no other frigolettes. So when I started in comedy, I had already done radio and had to change my name. So mm-hmm. I started comedy. It's like, no, no, no. I'm the only Dan Frigolette, and this is who you'll find when you fucking Google me. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about branding, and it's all about, you know. Getting a classmates.com page. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we do have to wrap. Uh, you have been incredible. Thank you for doing the episode. Um, if you found us, I don't know where you found us. We're on the other things. So we're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on Amazon and, and all the podcasts, networks, and whatnot. Uh, so check us out, SoundCloud. Um, thank you so much for listening. I'm here with Charlie Hart. Follow her on the web. Uh, go watch her clean her house uh, and all the things that she does. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm Thanks. Dan Frigolette.